Hey everyone, Caitlin here. Thanks for watching another episode of Bald and Breakdowns where we're looking at big concepts, big ideas, and lots of big feelings. And this week the concept is neuroception, which I'm super excited to talk about. Uh, I'm really glad that you guys voted for this in the polls because I've been wanting to do something um, that's kind of science heavy and lets me nerd out in that sense. Uh, and neuroception is not necessarily a new concept, um, it's one that I think has come more in, into the realm of understanding and education about mental health, about health in general, about well-being. Um, and for me, it has completely transformed my understanding and my therapeutic approach to anxiety, stress, trauma, uh, even sadness, hopelessness, depression. So many of these things that we understood from a very different lens um, my understanding of them has completely transformed with this concept of neuroception. So getting into it, neuroception is a subconscious process um, that uses tons of neural circuits throughout our body. And essentially it is constantly scanning and rescanning our environment. So imagine, you know, second by second, even as even as I'm sitting here filming this video, there is a second by second process going on in my body that's scanning all the things that I can see, all the things that I can hear, all the things that I can you know, smell and think and everything to assess if there is safety, if I'm in a safe place, <clears throat> or if there's any level of threat. And so in real time, let's say as I'm filming this right now, I have something stuck in my throat. And so I, I kind of feel nervous right away because even though it wasn't a conscious connection, I am feeling slightly threatened. And there are these circuits scanning the current environment, what's currently happening and saying, oh no, you're choking. <laughs> you, you're gonna have to start this thing over and that's stressful, so now I feel anxious. That's happening in real time. And this is a process that's constantly going on behind the scenes. So neuroception and this this constant scanning in our body um, is needed. It's an important process. And especially if you think about evolution and you know, going back to hunter-gatherer times 10, 11, 12,000 years ago, it is an extremely essential process because the threats, the, the you know, indications of risk in those environments were lethal risks, right? It was, you know, you're out hunting and a lion is going to come and kill you um, or the ice age you know i'm not a i'm not a big history person so i, th I think my timeline is roughly accurate um, but having that ability to not waste any conscious resources um, but really just use this kind of subconscious process using all these neural circuits to determine and assess if there's any level of threat is needed because then what it does is it creates this reaction of anxiety where we're now more alert, we're more vigilant, and we're more able to notice when these threats are coming closer and closer and also kind of react quicker. Um, that's kind of the typical sequence of anxiety when there's this threat to your system. The problem though is that threats today are not anywhere near the same and they're most of the time not an immediate lethal threat and our body still interprets them that way. So threats today are not, you know, lions or pumas coming to eat us. Uh, it's not the ice age. It's things like debt, things like heartbreak, uh, you know, when you're rejected, when you hear someone arguing or you're in the middle of an argument and someone's yelling, um, a threat could also be, you know, looking at your to-do list and seeing a huge list of items. Uh, even something as simple, simple as the weather. Right? If you go outside and it's raining or it's stormy, you're not often consciously making this connection that, oh, this is, this is something you know, threatening or scary, so now I'm going to feel anxious or sad or worried. But this process going on subconsciously within your body is doing that. You know? And that's why part of the reason why we'll see a lot of depression um, and a lot of worsened mental health in the winter months, right? Because in an evolutionary sense, you know, cold and not being able to have much daylight were significant threats to your well-being, to your ability to survive. 
So when there's this constant scanning of threats, um, the challenge is that one threats today are not, you know, lethal in most cases, but we can still assume them as such. And if we've encountered, you know, any type of trauma, um, and even, you know, trauma being considered as prolonged stress when we're in a chronically stressed environment, or if we grew up in a really chaotic environment, our body's ability to scan and accurately assess for threats is like gone. You know, our, our system is kind of miscalibrated. And so a lot of times people you know, ask me, well, why am, I, why am I feeling like this? Why am I this stressed? I know it's not logical. I don't need to think like that, but it's not logical. You know, this is a biological neural process of scanning and it doesn't matter if something is logically a threat, it is perceived as a threat. And so we naturally take it as such. And then there's that chain of reactions of, of feeling anxious, of feeling worried, of feeling panicked, of getting angry, of being sad. All of these things happen as a result of this underlying subconscious process that we often aren't even aware of. So. That's my reception, a little bit over six minutes, but I don't care. Uh, and I will see you guys next week for another episode of Bald and Breakdowns. Bye.